So a nested function, an interior function, can make use of the local variables of the functions which contain it, but this actually goes further than you might think. Here we have an outer function with a local parameter a and a local variable b, and we have an interior function with a local parameter c, but which makes use of a and b. The problem is that the interior function is being returned out of the outer function, at which point the interior function might be called, even though we have left the call to the outer function. But this doesn't seem like it should work, because the interior function makes use of a and b, but a and b shouldn't exist anymore, because the call in which they were created just returned. The reason this actually works just fine in JavaScript is because JavaScript implements a feature called closure. Closure refers to the phenomenon whereby an interior function can keep around the variables of the call to the outer function which created that inner function. So let's say we call this outer function twice, first with an argument 2, then with an argument 3. The key thing to understand here is that the function objects returned by each of these calls are not the same object. The two objects represent the same interior function, but with different closures. So we have two function objects, but the a and b retained by one object are different from the a and b retained by the other. So when we call bar with the argument 6, 6 gets passed to c, b has the value 4, and a has the value 2. So this returns 12. But when we call ack with the argument 6, we're invoking the same interior function, but with a different closure. So 6 gets passed to c, b again has the value 4, though this is actually a different variable b, and this a has the value 3, and 3 plus 4 plus 6 is 13. This example demonstrates that we can assign to these closure variables. Again, bar and ack here are being assigned to objects that represent the same interior function, but the two objects have different closures. The variable a in one object is different from the variable of the same name in the other. So, when we invoke bar here the first time, we're calling the interior function with a having the value 2. So in the function, we then increase a by 2 and return a, so we return 4. Then when we invoke the same function object, we're invoking the same function, but now a starts with the value 4, so we add 2 to 4 and we get 6, and we return 6. When we call ack, we're calling a different function object, and the first time we call it, its a starts with a value 3, so we add 2 to 3, and we get 5. As I briefly mentioned, what we call dictionaries in Pidgin, JavaScript calls objects. Objects in JavaScript are not created with an operator per se, they are created with a literal syntax. An object literal is denoted by a pair of curly braces in which you write the properties of the object, and property is basically just what JavaScript calls a key value pair. JavaScript objects are a bit more restrictive than dictionaries in that the keys must be strings, and JavaScript usually calls these property names. To access and modify the properties of an object, we use an operator which is a pair of square brackets. The square brackets immediately follow some expression that evaluates into the object whose property we are accessing or modifying, and inside the square brackets we put an expression which evaluates into a string which is the name of a property. So, in this code, the first thing we're doing is we're creating a variable named foo and assigning it an empty object, an object with no properties. In the second line, we're declaring a variable named bar and assigning it an object with two properties. The properties are separated by commas, and each property is written as first the string, then a colon, and then some expression that evaluates into the value. So the two properties of the object being created here are first the property bill with the value 2, and the property Diana with the value 11. In the third line, we're declaring a variable ack and assigning it the value of the property bill of the object bar. So ack here is assigned 2. In the third line, we are assigning to the property bill of the object bar, and we're assigning it the value 3. Recall when we discussed the assignment operator, we said the language makes the distinction between L values and R values. L values are expressions which can go on the left side 
of an assignment operation. And so here finally is the other kind of thing that you can make the target of an assignment other than just a plain variable. In the next line we're assigning the value 8 to the property ned of the object foo. Note though that foo until this point doesn't have any properties, so what we're actually doing here is creating a property in that object. Finally, in the last line, we're assigning ack the value of the property ted of the object foo, but the object doesn't have any property of that name, so this operation returns the value undefined. Because the syntax for creating and accessing these properties is a bit verbose, JavaScript actually allows us a shortcut. If a property name is a valid kind of identifier, then in our object literals we don't have to make them strings, we can just write them as identifiers. And when we modify or access a property name which is a valid identifier, instead of using the square brackets we can use the dot operator. So here as you can see, instead of writing bar square brackets and then the string bill inside, we can just write bar dot bill. These conveniences not just look cleaner, they're much easier to type. Of course, you'll have to fall back on the square bracket notation when the property name is not a valid identifier or when you want to specify the name with something other than a literal. You might want to get the name, say, from a variable or by calling a function, and in those cases you'll have to use square brackets. The term method is basically a synonym for function but it's used in the context of object-oriented programming to mean a function which is defined as an operation of some data type. I'm not going to get into at this time an explanation of what really that means. Suffice it to say at this point that in JavaScript the term method refers to a function which inside it uses the reserved word this. The reserved word this simply refers to an object which is passed to the function in a special way. To illustrate, here we're creating a variable foo and assigning it an empty object, and then we're assigning to the property bar of that object a function. What happens when we then use the dot operator or the square brackets to get this property, this function, and then invoke that function, is that the object gets passed by basically syntactical magic. It gets passed to the word this. So in this call, foo gets passed to this and so when we assign 3 to this dot ack, we are assigning 3 to the property ack of the same object referred to by foo. Now with a little thought, it should be apparent that this mechanism, this, is totally unnecessary. If we want to pass an object to a function, we don't have to have a special mechanism. We can just create a parameter to accept that object and then pass it in. So here we modify the code by giving the function a parameter x, and then we put x everywhere we were using this, and then when we call the function, we simply pass the object explicitly. As you can see though, the disadvantage here is we have to write foo twice when we make the call, and really that's the whole reason this mechanism exists. It was decided that people do this often enough that it would be nice to avoid that duplication. Now, one thing that's odd about this is that it's a reserved word, which is effectively like a variable. However, it's not actually a variable because you can't assign to it. So here, when we attempt to assign a value to this, we're going to get an error. You also may be wondering what happens when you have a function that uses this, but you call the function not via any property, you just call it straight. So effectively you have nothing to pass to this. Well, what happens is that by default, what gets passed to this is what JavaScript calls the global object. It turns out that all the globals in JavaScript are actually just properties of this one central object, and that's what's really going on. So when you create or modify a global variable named foo, what you're actually doing is creating or modifying a property named foo of the global object. This reality basically has zero practical consequence. And in fact, there's really no practical use of this behavior whereby the global object gets passed by default to this. In practice, you're simply just going to make sure that when you call a method, this gets past something of your choosing, not the global object.